from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. I am Ben Hall. Good show tonight. We are talking about one of Nashville's true treasures, the Nashville Symphony and the remarkable journey of the Skirmerhorn Symphony Center over the last 10 years. We're very happy to have with us the president and CEO of the Nashville Symphony, Alan Valentine. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. So we're going to talk about this year's, what, what you all are doing this year. But before we do that, I want to talk bigger picture. Kind of, you know, look back on the last 10 years, but also, I guess your philosophy as it comes to the symphony. You've said it's not your grandfather's symphony. What do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, Nashville, first of all, as Music City, is a very creative place. It's a place where lots of uh, uniquely American music is made, uh, it, it, you know, recorded, performed, and, and promoted throughout the world, and celebrated, frankly. And, uh, you know, we, we feel like uh, the Nashville Symphony, in order to be contributing to that brand as Music City, uh, that, that we ought to really, you know, think about the ways in which we can be unique and creative and carve a niche for ourselves in the national and, and even global landscape of orchestras. And so, you know, we've made, first of all, in the classical realm, uh, a really huge commitment to uh, uh, commissioning, recording, and performing the music of living American composers and so even in our classical series you know of course you get a, a very healthy dose of the the standard classics the war horses of the literature but you get that alongside some very interesting works by living American composers and uh, we've recorded a number of those works we've won several Grammys now eight Grammys for the the uh, recordings of those works and so in the classical realm we're doing that but then we're, we're reaching beyond that and so you'll see that uh, this last weekend we opened opened our uh, uh, season with uh, performance of the Ben Folds Piano Concerto that we co-commissioned with ballet, uh, with the Nashville Ballet um, uh, in 2014. Uh, we've worked with, of course, Bela Fleck in a similar fashion, with Edgar Meyer, and with a number of musicians here in Nashville. And so uh, those collaborations are interesting because they really cross over uh, uh, several boundaries. And we treat that music as seriously as we would classical music. And so, you know, we're doing that, but then we're reaching out beyond that even and, uh, and performing uh, uh, not only with artists who are from Nashville, but, uh, you know, from around the world, popular uh, artists. Uh, on our pop series, we're doing several special concerts each year, and we'll we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, oh, I, I agree. I think you are <clears throat> you're doing very creative stuff. A few Halloweens yes. ago, I went out, and you had um, Phantom of the Opera, and it, you had someone playing the the orchestra score from the black and white version of Phantom of the Opera. And so you mm. don't think you're going to go to the beautiful Symphony Hall, you know, on Halloween and see Phantom of the Opera, but it's something different. Exactly. And so you're. It's, it's beyond just the classical Bach and, and Beethoven, which is great, but it's beyond that. So you're trying to be creative. Is, is that fair yes, to say? Yes, I mean, that, that, that's exactly it. We're, we're focusing a lot of creative energy around what kinds of unique things can we do? What kinds of things actually can we do for which the hall is ideally suited to? And so, you know, the Phantom of the Opera thing that you saw, and, and by the way, we're doing the, you know that again this year. Okay, uh, interesting. Uh, with the organ, you know, we have this magnificent concert organ, the Martin Foundation Concert Organ. It was built by Schoenstein out in uh, San Francisco, California, and, uh, and rebuilt, by the way, following the flood. But th that organ is, is a magnificent instrument, and to put it out on the stage and then do the silent movie with uh, organ accompaniment is a, a lot of fun on Halloween and, uh, and a big tradition for us. But, but there's so many different things. Jazz, we, we do a lot of jazz. We've done bluegrass, Americana. I mean, it, it really sort of runs the gamut. And you know what we have found uh, is that we have made the institution stronger because we've broadened the audience of people that are coming into the building and hearing the orchestra in many cases for the very first time. Uh, you know that that has certainly attracted audiences, and there's a lot of debate in the industry around you know does that really turn into classical subscribers? And you know my my point of view, my philosophy is I don't really care if it does. 
Um, it would be nice. I'd like for you know more people to come to classical, and and we do well. We have a very high fill rate uh, uh, for all of our concerts. A eighty one percent across the board for all of our concerts is are paid admissions. Okay, that's good. And so, and when you ta when you talk about one hundred and forty concerts in a year, that's you know we're doing well. So, um, but that uh, has but been a question: the future <coughs> of classical music. I guess I've been asking it for exactly. a long time. It's been around a long time. Exactly. But boy, in this modern age, you know, what, what, what do you think? Well, I think classical music is healthy as it has ever been. It is um, here to stay. Uh, it's very clear to me, anyway, that, that classical music is relevant. Um, it's very much alive and vibrant. And uh, we have seen in Nashville, because, and I think it's because of that creativity, we've seen our audiences actually grow in the last few years. I mean, uh, you know, we, we just, uh, in fact, issued a, a, a press announcement about our results this year, but we had record ticket sales for the third straight year. And, and we are, are growing in leaps and bounds. Some of that is because people are getting introduced to the facility and the orchestra, and then they say, gee, this is fantastic, I need to come back. Uh, but, but it also means, even if all they ever come to are some of those events, that we are serving a much broader segment of the community, and, and we're here to serve the community and the art. I think you're right. Once they go in that mm -hmm. facility, they want to go back. Exactly. The Skirmhorn. It's, it's so amazing. It's remarkable. It, it really is. And, and I think you're also right that if they get brought in for a concert with someone they wouldn't necessarily associate with the symphony, yet they're, you know, playing there with the symphony, they're more inclined to come back when the symphony does straight up classical music. Exactly. And have you been seeing that? And, oh, we have seen that. And we've also been very deliberately working to help move people from the entry point, whichever entry point they choose, into some of the other things that we do. And, and I think we've been pretty effective at that. Um, it also has developed a, a much larger base of, of donors for us. You know, the, the orchestra is a nonprofit. Uh, we depend on the support of the community for our ability to, to serve the community and to serve the music. And, uh, and in the last few years, we've also achieved, in fact, for the last three years, record contributions in each of those three years. And so, uh, you know, we, we it, you know, it's no secret we went through some challenging times, but today we are much better and much stronger, and the community has really, you know, uh, come, come to, you know, out to support the orchestra. And I think a lot of that is because they look at what we're doing and they say, gee, these are really creative programs and we want to go out and, and see them. And so. And is that something symphonies across the country are doing? Are you seeing that um, in, in other big city symphonies? Are they trying to reach out to young people like this? Are we, are we better suited to do it because um, we're music city? Well, I think we are better suited to do it because there are things that we can only do here. I mean, I, in fact, that was one of the reasons 18 years ago that I was attracted to the job here is I thought, you know, you would have an opportunity in a place like Nashville to do creative projects that you couldn't possibly pull off in most other markets because the talent that doesn't exist in those markets that, that we have here. We have uh, an incredible base of talent in the community. Uh, but, but also, um, uh, other orchestras really are reaching out and trying to do these things. Uh, the National Symphony recently programmed the uh, Piano Concerto of Ben Folds that we had commissioned on one of their classical subscription weeks. Uh, we uh, uh, have participated with a number of other orchestras in performing these films uh, where the score has been stripped out of the film, but the voices left. So, you know, I think we started out, the first one we did was The Wizard of Oz, and so the orchestra was actually playing with Judy Garland singing, and uh, uh, that was that was quite fun. But you and know, yeah, now that's great stuff. Aren't you yeah. Harry Potter? Is that yes, coming up? I think we're going to we'll, we'll, again talk yeah. about all that. But so, that's great stuff. It and is Star Wars. Maybe, I don't know. There's there's great music out yes, there. It and again, really it gets is. a new group in there. All right, so we're, right, we're going to take a break. If you want to call in, you can call in or you can just listen because we're going to go through a list of stuff that I think will be very fascinating. But there's the number 615-737 plus 615-737-7587. Take a break. Be back right after this. Great.